Hi everyone. Yes, it's been two years. So it's been two years since I've been on Keto Vegan. I've been a vegan for, for a long time. I was a vegetarian, I think it was back in 2007. And then when I'm being vegan, I think it was 2011. So it's been um, nearly 10 years being a vegan. And in April 2018, um, I decided to give keto a go. And obviously then I had very little idea um, what it would be like and how long it would last or it would last at all. And I went on as an experiment. I was aware of um, ketosis. I, was, I had some knowledge on that because I had been on a, a version of Atkin. Um, which probably lasted about six months. So my track record of going on some, any kind of diet, well, other than being vegan or vegetarian, that's a different thing. My track record on any kind of dietary changes for health reasons or for weight maintenance has not been good. So in a way, I have to say that I'm surprised um, that I'm still doing keto. But at the same time, I'm not. And I'll explain to you why that is and why I'm still firmly here. So when I first went on keto as a vegan, to be honest, I didn't even know it was possible, let alone doing it for two years. And the reason was that no one else I knew was on it. You know, I looked down for a lot of keto information and there's a, there was a lot out there, but no one was vegan doing it. Um, not even vegetarian. I, I, I didn't see many vegetarian keto information. Mostly um, people are eating animal products, uh, meat, etc. So I had to do my research and it was a, a great learning process. I had to look into, um, not really through doctors or the mainstream experts, because most of them didn't really have very positive things to say about uh, being on keto, um, because it's high fat and low carb, which is completely contrary to what a mainstream tell you to eat. Um, the mainstream nutritionists or doctors, they tell you to eat um, you know, a fair bit of carbohydrate, because they're convinced your body absolutely needed to survive and be healthy. So I had to go in quite carefully. I didn't want to damage my own health, obviously. I have, I'm not married to the idea of keto. I didn't go in thinking that it's going to save my life or make me the happiest person on the planet. I just went in thinking that, you know, I'll figure out a way to adapt it to vegan and, uh, and see how it goes. So in a way that probably helped me in a sense to, to keep my um, mind open, so I'm not buying to a, a school of thinking necessarily, I was looking to everything. And uh, even though there wasn't any civil role model or anyone I could follow uh, as a keto vegan, I thought, well, my body would tell me what I need to do, whether it works for me or not. So I kind of it took one day at a time. So I was looking to independent um, experts for information from doctors. They are not being sponsored by corporations and people who are not attached to a school of thoughts and will not budge despite uh, the evidence of the country. And you can find a lot of scientists almost become the victims of their own knowledge and doctors uh, as well. They are taught a certain way and they carry out that knowledge and will not buy into any other school of thoughts. So I had to find these people out. Um, I watched a fair bit of Joe Rogan um, I think, you know, whether you like him or not, he does have some interesting people on his podcast. Um, so I, I do recommend that. There are a lot of non-mainstream people that you probably wouldn't come across unless you, you know, go into this independent uh, podcast. And also along the way, I discovered uh, doctors like uh, Dr. Jason Fung, who is a kidney doctor and he treats people with type 2 diabetics every single day and is practically saving their lives by putting them through a version of keto diet. But a lot of knowledge and directions are still heavily based on people who eat animal products. So I had to find a way to make it work for me and my body. And this is important because even as vegan keto, we respond differently even if we eat the same amount of quantity of the same foods. And this is one of the biggest lessons and kind of topple my idea of what food does to us um, from Jason Fun is that there's some fundamental paradigm changes. So one of them is calories and what it means to us. In a way, to put it simply, calories have lost meanings for me. 
And this is quite a, a big shift because so far the dietary changes that I've been following, I would say 80-90% is very much based on the amount of calories you consume. And that becomes the um, sort of framework of deciding what to eat and how much to eat is by counting calories. Another factor is fat. And you and I both know that uh, being on keto is, is basically being on a pretty high fat diet. So a lot of mental sort of pre-constructed frameworks have, have to be deconstructed before you can move on because we're doing things that's totally counterintuitive. But why does it work? And you can only understand that when you have some knowledge about the science behind it. You know, our bodies are really smart machines, but they're not all the same. And there are a lot of variables that individually that we cannot ignore. So it's not that you buy a textbook of how to be on keto and just stick with it and it works. And that's one of the things I learned, it does not work this way because you, you and I could eat exactly the same food and same quantities. One might gain weight, one might lose, one might feel great, one doesn't. So why is that happening? So I have to apologize if this chat is going to be totally disorganized because I'm basically talking as I think of uh, whatever topics that come up. I simply want to share my sort of thought process and uh, why it's still working for me, hopefully in this video. And um, so I think the fundamental knowledge that I gain that kind of shifted my whole perception about my relationship with food is that if you're constantly doing something that's upsetting your, your system and cause it to be inflamed um, in terms of um, raising the sugar level extremely high and then allow it to crash um, and go through that cycle on a daily basis, maybe several times a day, and also burden your body in the sense that it takes a lot of energy for it to digest the food you consume, then you cannot possibly expect a good quality of life. Your body will need to endure and suffer several times a day and go through that cycle, um, simply because what you consume. And we all have to eat. It's not something that, you know, if, if you think alcohol is upsetting your system, you know, don't drink it or even coffee, you know, you can quit coffee. Um, I don't want to, but um, food we have to eat. And it took me a long, long time to realize it, having struggled for a long time with my body, constantly wrestling with it. So those of you who have been following my channel for a while, you probably know that I used to dance a lot and I was inspired to be a dancer. And I had to give that up. I literally give that up because I was struggling with my body so much. Your body is, is your instrument. And uh, from a very young age, I had to constantly fight with myself in this body that I um, live in, hitting the puberties, and uh, my body just went, I couldn't control it. A lot of things are happening at that age. But as a dancer, it's kind of the worst thing to go through because it distracts you from everything else. I could not get my body to do what I wanted to do. And a lot of it is to do with body shape. And I think it's so much worse when you're a dancer because there's nothing else, it's just body. You, you rely on your body for the art form. And, uh, and when the body doesn't listen to you, you're in trouble. A lot of weight issues, and that is linked to self-esteem and confidence, etc. But even when I gave up the ambition and moved on to some, something else that does not require my body to be a certain shape, my battle went on. I've never been obese um, in a medical sense, but uh, it has been going up and down. Even if you look back to my earlier videos, I, I weighed a lot more than I am. And I was eating a fairly healthy diet comparing to average people. You know, I was eating a lot of fresh vegetables, um, but also I was consuming a lot of carbs too. I wasn't the biggest sugar eater, but carbohydrates fundamentally is sugar, uh, whether it's in the sugar form or not. But I wasn't aware of that because my whole life, um, I've been told that if you want to maintain your weight, Yes, the food choice is important, but also calories would be paramount. So if it adds up to be too many calories, you will gain weight. But if you reduce it, you lose weight. Simple, right? And this is one of the lessons I've learned. That's one, probably one of the most misleading. I, I wouldn't say it's a lie, but a lot of in industries, a lot of products are linked to that notion that low calories means it's better food, healthier food. That 
is completely abolished in my head now. It makes absolutely no sense. And I'll encourage you to listen to Dr. Jason Funds. Um, he has a lot of talks that you, um, it's captured on YouTube. So if you just search for Dr. Jason Fun, he goes into different areas of um, how our body functions. So he treats mainly people are suffering from type 2 diabetics. So we can learn so much from his experience with them. He put his patients on low carb, high fat diet. But what he does not do is to test it, whether there are in ketosis. And this is also one of the biggest lessons I learned from him is the fact that you don't need to be in ketosis to gain all the benefits. And I know that is true because I lived that. When I was um, doing Atkins years and years ago, I was doing the test strip um, that you can test with your urine. And that was because I was told that was one of the most important things being on an uh, Atkins, which is get your body into a ketosis state. And it's kind of true in a way. I think if you reduce your carbohydrate down to a certain degree, the, the ketosis will kick in. Your body will naturally go into ketosis, but the difference is that shouldn't be the main thing you focus on. All you need to be aware of is the balance of your diet, is having sufficient amount of fat and good salt as well, and then reduce your um, carb intake as much as you can. You know, I say it time and time again, I'm the most lazy keto on the planet. I don't count calories, absolutely not. The idea has been, you know, totally abolished in my head. And I don't use test strip or any method to test if I'm in ketosis. I think you will know whether you're in some level of ketosis because your body is working totally different way. When you're on a form of keto versus eating high carb food, you are not the same creature. It kind of transforms how your body functions. You feel totally different. So in the past, I have described uh, being on keto is almost like you are in a state of calm because your body is no longer fighting you back. Well, I noticed that being two years on it, sometimes you take it for granted. You, you, you think it's normal state because you, you've been doing for a while. You are fat adapted and things are easy. You're really hungry. And you think it's always been like this, but no. And, and I've been reminded that when I did an experiment on resistance starch, and I'll put a link underneath um, my little experiment into um, eating um, carbohydrate that's been chilled overnight and then consume it uh, the next day or the day after. And um, even though I didn't gain weight as a result, um, I did it only for about 10 days. The weight gain wasn't the problem. I didn't gain any weight because of that. But I had suffered carbohydrate coma. I ate some sweet potatoes that had been chilled overnight. So in theory, it should be mostly resistant starch. I was feeling so sleepy and fatigued um, almost half an hour afterwards. And it, and it was really strange because on one hand, it felt almost familiar because that's how I feel like when I used to eat high carb food. I'll use a plate of pasta and I'll feel tired afterwards. But I was like most people who have been eating like that for most of their lives. I thought that was just the way it was. You know, of course, if you eat starchy food, you feel a little bit sleepy. And if you eat, eat a big meal with high sugar, high starch, then you will feel tired. It was kind of accepted as the norm. And I realized that wasn't normal at all. And I know now exactly why my body was reacting that way. It's akin to if you drink alcohol, you get drunk eventually, right? <laughs> Do you know how much you can drink? It's exactly the same thing. If you put your body through a lot of starchy food and sugar, that's how your body would react. Because after consuming the food, your body is spending so much energy trying to digest and process it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think sugar goes straight to your livers. Your livers have to work really hard. And with starch, yes, it goes through a few more steps before it gets to your liver. But still, your body has to work extremely, extremely hard to process it. So it dedicates all energy to digesting the food you have just consumed. So you had to switch off all the other non-essential functions. So it's not, not essential that you can go and run a marathon after you eat some uh, starchy food, right? Um, you can live and survive without doing a marathon. So it's lowering functions of your uh, other parts of your body and dedicate everything to digesting. So that's why you feel tired and sleepy and no energy. 
So if you know that's what it's doing, it makes it very hard for me to want to pick up a piece of bread or to eat that plate of pasta. Because now you know what's happening to your body when you do that. And as I said, being on keto is almost like the storm is coming off for the first time in my life. If you're new to keto and you want to know how it works, um, I've got sort of a layman's guide on how to start keto as a beginner, the things you need to watch out for. And I'll put the playlist and, and the links to the videos down there. Hopefully it's gonna help you. But I have to kind of find my own way. And one of the things, as I said, uh, unlike other substances, we have to eat food. So that's what motivates me to uh, create recipes or learn from others and adapt them to vegan and keto at the same time. And that's this channel that you're, you're looking at. Um, and all the recipes you can see in the food I make, I made them for myself. You know, in the very beginning, to be honest, I didn't do it thinking that I'm gonna be helping um, tons of people. Um, nothing that noble and heroic was going on. I did it um, purely for myself because I want to have a good quality of life. I want to be, be able to stay on this diet as long as I can and then still enjoy the food I eat. That became kind of the drive. And then along the way I discover, wait a minute, you can eat really well, a lot of interesting food and really enjoy it being keto and vegan. It's entirely possible. And I discovered that along the way. And I think when, when there are sort of challenges and restrictions, you also inspire a lot of creativity. So I have to think out of the box and uh, basically experiment a lot. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. But when it does, it's just amazing. It's, you know, it makes you so happy. It's, well, this is really good stuff. So I wanted to share because there's so little um, about keto and vegan around. You know, I think everybody knows how to rustle up a good salad, right? But I, I think, you know, not everybody can eat like that um, every day, 24 seven. We need stimulation. We need interesting food. What is so true is that even being on keto for, for two years, and I think my body no longer craves for starchy food. I still crave for starchy looking food. So there's a fundamental difference. So for instance, a lot of you are making uh, my keto bread, um, keto vegan bread. Um, so look up the recipes if you haven't seen them. So, and so many of you comment and write to me how much you enjoy them. And in a way, it kind of keeps you being on keto. And if you think about why that is, is the, the fact that what you're eating is not starch. They're starchy looking things, right? Things we associated to being comforting and uh, being happy. All the happy occasions that human have involve some sort of high carb food. You know, birthday parties, you have cakes. And Christmas, you have Christmas pudding. And uh, if people get together, they, they eat sweet things, they eat bread, pasta, whatever. So we have a lot of emotional attachments to these foods, and that's beyond physical. So imagine if you um, eat some keto bread that has close to no starch in it, but you feel thoroughly happy and satisfied. That means what you're craving is no longer the starch. Your body has released you from that horrible cycle of having to feed your body with uh, tons of carbohydrates and sugar but you're still there emotionally with bread with noodles with um, you know pancakes or whatever it is or cakes biscuits and that longing and desire is up here so there are two elements your body have to um, go through when you go on this journey is that Initially, your body will fight back, right? So if you, um, those of you who have just started keto um, in the first month or two, you probably know your body kicks back. And, and that's perfectly normal. It's totally expected because you've been feeding your body. Your body is using uh, glucose and carbohydrate and sugar as fuels for probably most of your life. And suddenly you go, well, I'm not giving to you anymore. Your body is going to protest. And that's what's happening in the initial period of being on keto, that people suffer from keto flu. So you shouldn't be surprised. But there are ways that you can minimize that. So look into my videos there uh, with some tips. I mean, I think good salt is 
um, definitely your best friend. And also making sure you, you're taking enough sufficient fat. But your body will kick back for sure. And it's important for you to get through that period before you can enjoy the benefit. Your body needs time to adapt and everybody needs slightly different lengths. You know, for me, it took probably about two, three months before I felt like, oh, I think I've landed somewhere. Because till then you were a bit like that. You kind of, um, you know, you felt that there's still storms going on within you and trying to uh, work out itself. So it's that storming forming process. It happens when you try to change things, you know, and, and it definitely helps if you know that's what you're going through. So you're not surprised um, your body will react. Uh, and go, well, give me some sugar, give me some carbs. So you need to prepare yourself to go through that. And I think an initial week would be the first challenge. I'm trying to recall what happened to me then. I would say my body was doing probably better than my head. The psychological part um, cannot be ignored. When you're making changes like going on to keto, your body will react but also your mind your mind will play tricks on you uh, it will tell you that i cannot imagine i'll never be able to eat a piece of bread again that because that felt like such a deprivation even though there's no logical reason why that's going to uh, destroy your life <laughs> eating a piece of bread but if if it feels devastating right and you go are you telling me I can never have a piece of bread? You know, it feels like such a deprivation. I think it's just human nature that when you're told that you can never do something, your mind starts to fight back. And I think a lot of people probably give up before starting because the idea of that is too unbearable. So it kind of became a mission to create food that don't look ketogenic, but they are. Okay, so the, you know, I'm talking about um, biscuits, bread, pasta, pancakes. And, uh, and the reason for me that's important to share recipes like that is because that will ease you from that trick that you play with your mind saying that you can never have something. Now you can't say you, you can never have a piece of bread because you can. And um, yes, you have to make the bread yourself, but that's a great life skill to have, right? To be able to bake bread or, or make any food for yourself is a satisfying and uh, an important life skill. And everybody can cook if you know how. So everybody knows how to rustle up a plate of salad, right? But baking isn't so straightforward. So my contribution, so I felt the most value I could add to people who um, are going through this, these changes is to free them from the mental prison thinking that you can never have something that looks starchy um, because it's not true anymore. So if you're relieved from that, you're free from that, then you can focus on, on why you're on keto. You, know, you want to optimize your body, you want to feel better, have better quality of life. We don't know how long we live, no one knows, but every given moment, the quality of life we go through is real. And uh, I just don't fancy the idea of having carbohydrate coma on a daily basis and just for the sake of eating some food that I enjoy for, for 10 minutes. So in a way, I kind of regain that perspective that I didn't have before. And that makes things so much easier. So I know I'm free from the, the kind of cycle my body has to go through when I put a lot of carbohydrate and sugar in my body. I'm free from that. And also mentally I'm free because I know I don't have to deprive myself. And food is interesting. And when you eat, you no longer feel guilty, right? How many times have you eaten a big plate of pasta? It was delicious at the time, but then you felt terrible for the next few hours or a day after. And also you have to suffer the consequence of a weight gain or whatever it is. And so it's a pleasure and guilt cycle that we constantly go through and we can't get out. So, and being on keto is a different story for me is that your body is not in battles every time you eat something that you enjoy. You know, being on keto, that you can eat um, all this yummy food. And food becomes so much more enjoyable because there's no guilt attached. I know I can eat um, a pizza, keto pizza. I know I can eat keto bread and not feel that, that there's a terrible consequence um, I have to endure. And that's why I'm still here. 
And I made a video that's um, on the first year mark, sort of a one year anniversary. Um, I'll put a link down here as well if you want to have a look. You know, I was still very much in the learning process and I'm, I still am now. Um, but that was the point I felt maybe this is sustainable. But I didn't want to have that as a given. You know, but even now, like, I wouldn't say I'll be on keto forever. I mean, who knows? Um, and there's no benefit on cornering yourself and, and trapping yourself into a notion. Um, you don't want to marry to your ideas. I would be on it as long as I feel great on it. So for those of you who are starting keto or thinking about doing so, my biggest advice would be um, focusing on big pictures. This is about learning about yourself. And I learned so much about myself. Um, in the process. I understand what will make it work for me. If you're one of those who really love data, you like, you know, having log everything and uh, write diary on the food you eat every day, then do so. If that motivates you, do so. What I know about myself is that that will not ever work for me. You know, the day you want me to start writing diary and, and count in macros, that's the day I'll give up. So, Knowing that about myself, I had to step back and go, well, okay, I'll stick with the principles and see how my body will respond. And then I'll tweak. The only thing I track is my weight. So I use a scale um, that links to an app and that allows me to track my weight. And I try not to obsess with daily kind of day-to-day -day fluctuation. You need to kind of zoom out and look at weekly and monthly or even longer period and see whether you know, general trend is going down, stay the same, or it goes up. And then you, you tweak the food you eat according to that. And those will learn about how individual food does to your body. You know, because I can eat something that's totally ketogenic, but it makes my body retain water. And I know that because my, my weight would go up the next day. And that happens consistently. And you observe that, you go, okay, this food does this to my body. And then you can decide whether you want to eat eat that food or not. And the opposite also applies that I've been eating foods that may not be strictly ketogenic. You know, I talked about it in the, um, the previous videos. I eat a lot of fava beans. Um, not so much currently, but I went through a phase like ate, you know, fava beans almost every day. And if you look at a carb count of fava beans, you would say, well, that's not ketogenic. Not really. It's not high carb, but it, it's not ketogenic. But somehow my body was fine with it. And particularly when I was going through my yoga teacher training, I would say 80% of my diet is consists of fava beans because um, it's high energy and uh, I can just pop a few fava beans and I'm, I'm done. That's my meal. And uh, it also doesn't burden my body. So I normally do yoga or exercise empty stomach because I can't bear having food in my body when I exercise. Um, but for some reason, fava beans are okay. So it's about discovering food that works for you and not get bogged down by textbooks so much. It's important to learn about um, the, the rules, the framework, but you really need to experiment your body. It's one hell of an experiment. That's what being a keto vegan for me. So as a conclusion, particularly if you're starting um, keto right now, is really to focus on bigger picture and also focus on sustainability, what will make you stay here. And obviously, if you feel good uh, being on keto, it might not work for everyone. If it's not for you, then, then you know, move on to something else. But you need to give it some time before you make that decision. How long is long enough? I don't know. But I say, you know, if, if you're on it for two or three months where you're supposed to be fat adapted, but you, you don't feel great, it, it's, you suffer along the way, <laughs> you feel terrible, then maybe it's not for you. And I'll never advocate anybody to go on keto, um, just like I never advocate anybody to become a vegan or vegetarian. It's your choice and you have to be smart about it. It's about learning the knowledge you need um, from independent scientists or doctors or experts and people who are open-minded and not married to their ideas and will not budge, even when they're facts, their country. Um, to what they're taught. So it's a journey not just about learning about food, it's also learning about humanity. It's learning um, the flaws and strength of, uh, of humans um, within others and also within yourself. And I'll continue to share recipes that I very selfishly 
create for myself for my own pleasure and then hopefully we'll bring you pleasure as well and that's that would be my motivation and again i thank you for your support um you know i read your comments daily i can't always reply to all of them um, i thoroughly enjoy reading them so thank you so much so like a lot of people when i went on keto um, the focus very much on weight you know i wanted to um, kind of maintain it in in a sort of optimal level but along the way i learned that it, it it is about weight but it also isn't it is about feeling well and also having a dignified existence that you're not being imprisoned by the food you consume um, by going through this daily cycle of this battle that your body goes through and be free from that. And I can only see now because I'm away from the battlefield, I could see what was happening there. And I hope my channel would help you to get out of a war zone so you can have a peaceful being. Your body will have a chance to heal and truly enjoying food with no strings attached then that, uh, that would make me very happy. But you have to make that decision for yourself. And the only way you can decide what is best for you is having that clarity. And the clarity comes from knowledge and also perspective and, and with an open mind. So thank you for hanging out with me today and follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Um, I share food ideas and those are recipes from this channel. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.